Hi, Spring fans. Welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. This time, we're going to deep dive in this multi-part series, exploring the depths of Spring for GraphQL project, the just released 1.0 uh, Spring for GraphQL project, the one that is now included in Spring Boot 2.7, which is itself also 1.0 GA. In this episode in particular, the first of a series, we'll start with a look at the foundational GraphQL Java project. The GraphQL Java project is an implementation of the GraphQL specification created by Andy Marek, who now works at Atlassian. Andy has worked closely with the Spring team to bring Spring for GraphQL 1.0 to fruition. He was instrumental in making this effort uh, work and making it amazing. Andy was also, by the way, a guest on the podcast. So if you haven't listened to that episode, definitely check it out. Andy can tell you better about the GraphQL Java project uh, than almost anybody. So let's first ask him. GraphQL Java is a Java implementation of the official GraphQL spec. And the official GraphQL spec describes what is commonly known as a GraphQL engine. So GraphQL engine is really the the heart or the core of a GraphQL execution um, independently of any protocol or any um, specific way how the data is loaded. And so yeah, GraphQL Java is, is a GraphQL engine for the JVM. And it was created now nearly seven years ago. And luckily, it found a wide range of, of um, adaptations and usages. It's used in editors and it's used in highly scalable environments like um, Twitter, Netflix, Airbnb and Atlassian. Um, all use GraphQL Java to power certain parts of, of their GraphQL API. And yeah, Spring GraphQL actually builds on top of this by um, providing a full-fledged end-to-end experience for the developer, which is not just the engine, but also um, all the goodies of the Spring Framework and Spring Boot environment. That's amazing. To have the insights that the engine would need to be as decoupled as possible uh, nearly half a decade before the Spring team would come along and fully exploit that flexibility, that's amazing. There's 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 a wisdom that you don't often see. And I loved hearing from Andy about some of the organizations using GraphQL Java successfully. Twitter even came out and talked about the use of GraphQL Java and detailed how it helped them to scale to greater heights than they'd managed before with their own stack, which I can't believe. I mean, it's just such a cool testimonial. As far as I know, nobody prompted that. They just published it. They just loved it. I'm convinced I want to use it. Let's dive right in and see it in action. All right, let's first get started uh, with the core fundamentals. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the Spring Initializer. Yes, even for this, we're just gonna use the Spring Initializer because it'll bring in the core SPI. We're gonna have to use the component model, which I prefer, of course. I prefer the component model, but let's start with the basics, right? So I'm gonna bring in the GraphQL support, which is, again, uh, available in Spring Boot 2.7. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use Java 17. We'll hit Generate, and we'll open this up in our IDE. So we have a brand new GraphQL project, uh, the first uh, really that we've, we've kind of looked at. So when you start these projects, you need to provide schema. So you go to source main resources and you create a schema file here in a directory called GraphQL. And it's gonna look for GraphQLS or GQLS, or GQ, GLS, I, but either way, .GraphQLS. Um, and so I'm just gonna call this, what am I gonna call it? Engine.GraphQLS. And the name is arbitrary. It has to be suffixed with .GraphQLS, but everything else can be arbitrary. And there, you describe the types that you'd like to work with. Well, we're gonna create a very low level uh, representation of some types that have fields, and those fields will be resolved through handlers that we're going to register here with a runtime wiring configurer. So let's create um, a root type called query, which is the first place that people expect uh, and that different uh, frameworks expect, like Spring Boot, um, expect to find your custom fields. So I'm gonna create a field here uh, called customers, let's just say, okay? And that'll return a an array of customers. So bracket, bracket, array. And in order for that to work, of course, I need a type called customer. 
And this is a bit like a class, really. You know, it's a class with um, public fields, sort of, or methods. It, think of them like getters, because sometimes these, these fields can take parameters or arguments, right? So this customer type, um, you know, it'll be a, um, I don't want to complicate it too much. So we'll have an ID field called ID. We'll have a name uh, that's a string. And there are other types as well, integers, numbers, you know, things like that, strings. Um, interestingly, I couldn't find a great way to represent dates, but usually it's okay if you just do string conversion back and forth. Um, okay, so we have customers and uh, we have a, a root, root type that is the beginning of all resolution for, you know, types called query. And let's just have, uh, maybe we'll have one more field here called customer by ID, which will take an ID of type ID, which is basically just a, a semantic thing. There's no actual type implied there. So it could be an ID, an integer, a string. It could be whatever, right? It's just that it, it, from the GraphQL resolution perspective, that type uh, is an ID. Um, okay, and that's it, I think, for now. Let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. So we'll go back to our engine application. And here, we're going to register a bean, okay? And this bean will be of type runtime wiring configurer. Um, and we'll, uh, you know, let's do this explicitly here so we can kind of see what's going on. All right, so we've got our runtime wiring configurer and you're given a builder. And with the builder, you can register handlers for given types. So the type will be query and the type that is expected here is a unary operator. Uh, and obviously this all just begs for lambdas, right? It'll, it'll be turned, you know, the IDE is even giving us a hint. If I click on this and I do the right key command, alt, uh, what is it, opt, uh, enter, that'll get turned into a lambda, lickety split, ditto for this unary operator. But just so you can kind of see what's happening behind the scenes, uh, we're gonna leave that in just for the moment. But don't worry, I will absolutely Marie Kondo those extra lines of code. Uh, so we have a query and when somebody wants a type, Right, we're going to use the wiring here. Convention. When somebody wants a type, um, we're going to say wiring dot, and we want to do a data fetcher. And a data fetcher is for a field. The field name is called customers. And the thing that we're going to provide here is a new data fetcher. Again, another lambda. And our job is given the current environment associated with the current context or the current request. Uh, our job is to return an object. Well, what is that object? Well, in this case, it'll just be an array of customers. And, you know, you can actually, you can just imagine this would all live somewhere else, right? You wouldn't have the business logic here. Um, you would have it elsewhere in a, in a service that talks to something else. So, you know, here I could just return, let's say, collection of customer, get customers, yeah. And uh, I can do a record customer integer ID, string name, voila. And I'm just gonna return, you know, list dot of new customer one, a new customer two, b, you know, that kind of thing, right? So very, very trivial. So we can use that one here to return all the customers. Let's do that. So we'll say, uh, let's inject our collaborating object way up here, CRM service, CRM. And we'll say CRM dot get customers and voila. Okay, pretty straightforward, yeah. Now I know the the moment you're waiting for. Let's replace it with lambdas because yeah, it's too much noise. Otherwise, there you go. That's not actually that bad, is it? It's really really spelt. Um, but actually, I, I want to keep that one last uh, anonymous class just for the moment. We'll get rid of it eventually. Um, so okay, when somebody asks for the customers field on the query type, that data fetcher gets involved. Okay, and it's a lambda, it's, a, it's like a supplier, basically. It's an object that gets invoked and you're given a chance to process uh, the arguments associated with that request. So what about the customer's by ID? Well, okay, customer by ID. And uh, here we'll have a environment and we'll say crm.get customer by ID. So let's just uh, customer get customer by ID integer ID, okay, and, you know, again, I'm just gonna return new customer ID and then some name, okay, so we'll just, whatever, just so we have something to work with. And again, this could come from a database, um, it could come from anywhere, right, so A, B, voila, okay. There's our get customer by ID, so here, 
I'm gonna say get customer by ID, but we need the actual ID, don't we? So where do we, where do we get that? Well, let's see here. Okay, the customer by ID, we need the ID. The ID comes from the environment. Um, and so we're gonna say ID dot, or environment dot get argument uh, ID. This will in turn return an integer, which is what we want. It's, it's doing casting. So, you know, the, the named argument or null if uh, not found. Um, to be safe, you can always just ask for it as a string and I can just pass that into this. You know, either way that would work. So there you go, there's my data fetcher for the, um, and, you know, maybe I'll just clean this up a little bit. Uh, we want uh, this to be uh, my key command for refactoring. It's not great. Okay, so E. N V, great. And we want uh, E N V. Wow, well, I figured it out. Okay, okay, good. So there's you know an example of us resolving something with a parameter into the into the field. You know, uh, what about the the type? You know, what if I had data uh, associated with the the customer itself, right? Something that hangs off the customer itself. Well, I can create a, a new type here called a profile, yeah? And this profile, again, it's just, we don't really care all that much about what's in it. Let's just say it's got an ID and an ID and a customer ID. And just for now, uh, we'll just create a representation of that here. Record profile, integer ID, integer customer ID, okay? And these might come from different microservices, but in our GraphQL view of the data, we might want them to live together. So we'll say, Profile is a profile. And there's only one of them, so I don't enclose it in uh, square brackets there. It's just profile, profile. And so I need, I need to create a builder for that, don't I? So I say builder.type customer wiring. Uh, same thing here, wiring dot data fetcher. Um, and then profile. And then uh, for the ENV here, we say um, we want the CRM data for that profile. So profile get profile for customer customer turn new customer so what we want is customer dot id and you know what let's just keep it simple there you go so i've got a profile now of course this again could be a sql database lookup where i'm joining or i'm doing i'm saying select all from profile where customer id equals this form key that i've got okay so crm dot get profile for, and of course I need the customer object now, don't I? And um, that's the source, that's the root of the, the graph here, right? So I'm gonna say get source, okay? And that'll be of type customer. Okay, let's go ahead and see if this works. We'll go ahead and, uh, we'll make sure I have a semicolon, certainly, and uh, we'll add this. Now, of course, I'm gonna wanna be able to interact with all this stuff, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my config here and enable the graphical client, right? So graphical, get it in graphical uh, client. You know what occurs to me? I think we forgot to add a web server. So let's go back to here and add the reactive web support. Uh, Spring GraphQL doesn't care whether you're using Spring WebFlux or Spring MVC. Either one is fine, but you do need to make a selection. It's not implied for you. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste all that in there. Uh, and to Maven reload. And with that, we've got our web server on the class path. Let's go ahead and restart the application. Uh, it's up and running on point, uh, you know, on port 8080. So local host 8080, so local host 8080 forward slash graph IQL. And that gets you this convenient handy dandy uh, in browser console that you can use to interact with your your uh, endpoint. And if I do that, you can see I, I, I make a query to the customer's endpoint. Um, a query is a way to read data, but you don't really know that when you deal with the runtime wiring configurer. Uh, you just know that you have a field and the field can be invoked or read from, you know, and you can take arguments. Uh, so let's try doing that. Customers by ID. ID is going to be, let's say, one and it's going to return a customer. So I have to specify what data from the customer I want. Maybe I want the ID, maybe I want the name, maybe I want the profile. And the profile is a completely different object 
but that in turn has subordinate fields. So I bring in ID uh, from that one as well. I can bring in custom ID, etc. Right? And each time as I do that, I'm able to see the results instantly reflected by hitting Control Enter or Command Enter, as the case may be, uh, uh, here in the console. So this is pretty straightforward, but it does kind of, to me, it was a little, uh, it was a little hard to understand that there's this, there's this distinction between queries and mutations and all these other sort of things that you, you come to take for granted when you work with GraphQL conceptually. Uh, the runtime wiring configure is there if you need it. It's a low level part of the API, but it's not where I want to start. So in the next uh, look, we're going to focus on, uh, we're going to introduce this spring component model for Spring GraphQL.